Well, good morning, church. So good to see you all here today. Those of you online as well, thank you. Come on, let's all stand together. And let's praise He from whom all blessings flow. Sing with me. All creatures of our God and King. I will live 
Somebody say hallelujah in the house of the Lord. He is worthy of all of our praise. And that is why we've gathered here today to be reminded of what is and what will be. And Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. As we sing this, would you respond with us? Do you feel the world is broken? We do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. Do you wish that you could see it all made new?
image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. For in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, so that through him he might reconcile to himself all things in heaven and on earth by the peace of his blood from the cross. Would you sing this with us? Behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb upon the cross who takes away the sins of all. Forgiveness flows from hands and feet as violence meets the prison.
for joining us this morning. It's so great to see all of you here, and we're so grateful for those of you joining us online as well. If you're a visitor with us this morning, we're glad you're here. We'd love to get to know you a little bit better so we can help you plug into the community here at New Hope. So we invite you to fill out our Connect card, and that is in the seat back pocket in front of you. Now for announcements this week, I'm excited to say we have our Serve Saturday coming up. It will be Saturday, April 27th. And this is an opportunity for all of us to come together and do service projects and be a blessing in our community. And the great news about this is it's a family-friendly event. So parents, you can bring your kids and childcare for three and under will be provided. So you can sign up for Serve Saturday at discovernewhope.com slash events. We hope to see all of you there. Now please join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, I come to you this morning full of gratitude for your everlasting love and your redemption. Please open our hearts and minds so that we may hear the message Pastor Johnny has for us this morning. We love, so, we love you so much, Lord. In your most holy and precious name I pray, amen. Well, good morning. Good morning to all of you here and those of you who are uh, online. I'd like to say hello to my Aunt Rachel in Mobile, Alabama. She's watching this morning. I hope you're uh, enjoying this. To those of you who, many of you don't have a clue who I am. I was uh, once part of the pastoral staff of the church. Uh, I was the one who was the tall, good-looking guy. And, uh, but this is what retirement does to you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am very glad to be here, and I'm very pleased to have so many friends in the audience. I have a couple here who we have loved for 50 years. 1974, 50 years, Dave. In fact, David was on staff. David, you were here that served at this church for some time as a worship pastor. And Annette, whom we, whom we love, good friends of ours for such a long time. Uh, Dave's parents sang in my choir, his sister sang in my youth choir. Dave worked on staff with me, and glad to have you guys here. Let me ask this question. Do you occasionally find your thoughts running rampant? I mean, like, you, you weren't actually going there, but all of a sudden it pops into your mind and you can't get away from it? And it just, it runs and kind of begins to take a life of its own. Uh, how we think and we're going to be talking about that today. What was I thinking? Uh, we'll look at what Paul says about that as we observe the scripture in Philippians chapter 4, especially cha chapter 4 and verse 8. You know, there, there's even the time of losing focus. My thoughts are so much on what's going on in my life, in my mind, that I can be 20 inches away from talking to someone who's trying to communicate to me something and I really don't know what they're saying because my mind is somewhere else. You ever been there? Of course you have. Uh, you know, the thing is, as I was preparing this message this last three weeks, I realized there's no one who can escape what Paul wrote to the church at Philippi here in chapter 4. I think of so many things, even when I'm praying, and don't tell me you haven't had this experience. I'm sitting there praying, Lord, I, th I thank you for this. You've blessed me this week. I'm, I'm so grateful. And uh, did I set the oven at 375 or 3? And then say, oh, where, where was I going? Oh, yeah, Lord. And then back. It's a busy world. It's a busy world, and it intrudes into our existence in every possible way. Uh, Perhaps it's, there are much bigger issues on what you think about. It just pops into your head. You just can't get away from it. It begins to consume your thoughts and your life, 
your attitude and your actions of your life. Those things that just come and just hang like a dark cloud over your life. Uh, sometimes it affects not only you, but many times it affects everybody in your circle. It's not just our attitude, it is the way we are thinking. Uh, and it happens to every one of us. Today's scripture is going to uh, help that uh, with us. I feel, like, I feel like I've had a master class in that this past week. I was pre preparing the last three weeks after pastor asked if I would speak and started preparing for this. And it's kind of like God said about Monday. Okay, I'm going to put you through a bunch of stuff this week. And we'll see if you can live through this. And about yesterday afternoon, I wasn't sure. And then I you know, thought, Lord, you've given me this, and I've been around a long time. I, I cannot do this. And it's got, yes, yeah, right, you can't. But I can through you. And, uh, and he is glad to be there, the Holy Spirit, as, his, as the helper to r help us respond in the way that God would have us respond. And that's what we're looking at today as we search these scriptures. It says this, Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such such things. You know, who is hanging around with folks that are constantly putting themselves down, putting others down, they're bitter, they're whiners, and yet, that sometimes could be me. And I assure you it could be some of you guys as well. We all live there. So we, it's digging ourselves out of that hole through the understanding of what God says, here's your help for these issues in your life. People are naysayers, complainers, sometimes just negative people. Uh, the key word that we're looking at today is the word think. In this case, it is to change your thinking. Change your thinking, and then the assertion, do it quickly. Uh, for 40 years, I raised Arabian horses. Uh, and there's, you know, you can be back on the back of a, and I've been here several times, on the back of a green broke, big horse in the pasture, and you have the reins in your hand, and you're holding on kind of to the horn of the saddle, and then all of a sudden a piece of paper flies across the pasture like that, and then you're left hanging in the air. Okay? That's called a flight response. And I was thinking today, uh, how am I going to put that in such a way that it's, it's applicable and we can understand it? It's we need to have a flight response from those things which negatively affect our thinking and our attitudes and our life. As soon as we see it, we, we need to reject it and walk away from it. Uh, NIV, the, the New International Version, uses the word think that we've looked at today. The New American Standard Version uses the word dwell, okay? And the New King James Version uses the word meditate. They're, they're all really good interpretations of the original language. All three are good, think, dwell, meditate. But here's where the original language, the original Greek, helps us out a great deal. The word is Logozomai, okay? Logozomai means this. It means to dwell on. The word dwell, it means this is where we need to live. This is our dwelling place. We need to make this our home. So we are to dwell on these things. Rather than live in this world over here, we are to live here. And I think I, I love how that word is uh, is pretty broad in its uh, in its teaching and its understanding uh it, inter it introduces several things to us uh and that is how a person thinks represents his spiritual stability okay let me say that again how a person thinks 
represents his spiritual stability. Okay? We can put on a facade or a mask or get in a closet or whatever, that, but who we really are shows our spiritual stability. How do we put to practice what uh, we're going to be learning about today? That happens to all of us, uh, and it will continue to happen. We get to practice some things. So the phrase, dwell on these things, introduces this uh, spiritual truth. The imperative form, as found here, is actually, it makes a command. And the, the command is uh, saying, proper thinking is not optional in the Christian life. Okay, it's saying proper thinking is not optional for you and me. It's the right thing within the Christian life. For those of us who are Christ followers, this is the right way for us to think. The culture dictates many other ways for us to think, but God's word is pretty straightforward. And in these verses of scripture, it tells us verbatim how to do that. And logosomide is not just entertaining thoughts because, you know, just because a thought comes to your mind does not mean that it's sin. But if you dwell on it, if you live with it, that's when it can become sin, okay? Because something can pop in and you say, where did that come from? Sometimes it just comes from the enemy. But don't dwell on it. Move on. Dwell on the, these things that we'll be looking at uh, as well. So, the imperative form, proper thinking is not optional to you and I in our Christian walk. Logosoma is not just to entertain thoughts, it is to evaluate, to calculate, and to consider. Okay, I'm, not, I'm going to evaluate this. I'm going to calculate, and I'm going to consider these things. They're not just passing thoughts. They are more or less consuming thoughts. And that's, well, that's where we get into trouble, guys. Right? That's where I get in trouble, where I allow some thought, significant or insignificant, hang in my head so much that it consumes everything about me. Not just what I'm doing, but also my attitude, how others perceive me, and how I respond even to those I love. Consuming thoughts. Many people, many of us, just sometimes live there for long periods of time instead of walking away from it. Uh, passing thoughts are not sinful, like I said. It's if we just stay there. The verb form for this is habitual discipline of the mind to set all things against spiritual truths. It's the, it's the discipline of your mind. It's the repetition of your mind. If we are to discipline, we are to take authority over it and say, no, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go here. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go here. Uh, we'll talk about how that is practical in, in several ways this morning. Uh, Isaiah chapter 26 says this, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you he will keep you in perfect peace <coughs> whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you you can only trust someone as far as you know them some of us have problems of trusting God because we just don't know him that well. We don't spend time in his word. We don't spend time in prayer. We don't spend time with the family, the local church. We don't spend time in discipleship. And so we don't know him that well. We can only trust someone as far as we know them. I can trust Dave. I've known him a long time. He is trustworthy. We find out if we spend a lot of time with God and we have been through situation after situation with God and God has come through, we find out, whew, yes, he is trustworthy. So that's, I think that is something to take home with you. Peace versus anxious thoughts, fear, resentment, hurt, lustful thoughts, bitter thoughts. You want to live in peace or do you want to live over here with the world? The Bible leaves no doubt that people are a product of their 
thoughts. Okay? We are not what we look like just in the flesh. We are a product of how we are thinking. Uh, there's many ways to look at that. Scripture, of course, is the best way to look at it. Uh, you, I would ask the question through my life of some person, why does that person always behave like that? Why do they always behave like that? Well, the answer is that's the direction of their thoughts. That's how they always think. When a situation arises, that's immediately where their mind goes. That's immediately where those neurons fire, and that's where they're going to go each time. And so we want to look at maybe a little different approach. Again, Solomon in his wisdom in Proverbs chapter 23 says this, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So as a man thinks in his heart, so we may wear a mask and be really be living another way. As he thinks in his heart, that, that's who he really is. That's who we really are. We change our heart. It's like the old computer acronym, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out, okay? And I think that's very appropriate. If you put garbage in, garbage is going to come out. If this is what you think, read, look at, watch, what's going to come out, that's going to come out. If you're bitter all the time, angry, that's what's going to come out. If you're anxious all the time, uh, that's, in fact, sometimes I feel like the world encourages us to be anxious. You know, uh, I'm ready for some good news. Well, not yet. We want to throw some things out here that make you really anxious. You know, and, and so we live in an anxiety-driven world. Our culture today is, is this. Our culture today is on pragmatism and emotion and the importance of biblical truth is downplayed. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, take, take news, for example, watching the news. People no longer ask, is it true? People ask this, does it work, and how does it make me feel? Okay? Truth is the key, and we're going to look at that word by itself in a little bit. How it makes us feel doesn't mean anything, because that can change. Your feelings can change from one second to the next. My feelings can change from one second, depending on circumstance. So that's not it at all. And uh, so it's... It's what we know through the understanding and application of God's Word. Uh, we turn our culture to whatever works and try to turn it into some kind of positive emotion. Some people include, you know, say this. Well, you need to live your life like this. Is your cup half full or is your cup half empty? I have to tell you just right off the bat, I don't get that. I've never understood it. Uh, uh, I just see half a cup. It's, I mean, it's like I'm, I'm a realist. So yeah, that's, what does that look like? It looks like half a cup. And I was thinking, well, maybe, and this morning I was trying to think, well, why do people, maybe if it had some, like lipstick marks on it and had some milk dripping from it, that might be half a cup. So, well, so what? What does that actually mean? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean positive or negative. That's not what God is saying through the verses of Scripture we're looking at today. It's not a positive or negative thing. It's it's the approach to what is true and pure and righteous and just and admirable. Uh, you ask, the, you know, you, the question can be asked, and I've asked it, why do lost people behave the way they do? do? Why do they do that? Because they're lost. Lost people behave like that because they're lost. They're un they have an unsaved mind, and so their behavior is going to uh, exhibit what's running through their thoughts, through their mind. Scripture, and I'm going to read this part. Scripture describes the unsaved mind as, and it uses these exact words, the unsaved mind is depraved, focused on the flesh, which leads to spiritual death. It's hostile to God. It's foolish. It's hardened in spiritual truth. It's blinded by Satan. It's futile. It's ignorant. And it's defiled. Well, that's where the lost world lives. We're to live above that as we'll be looking at these scriptures in particular. So, I'm not a neuroscientist, but I have been through 
a lot of neurologists in the last 15 years of my life. Uh, many of you know I've spent six trips to the hospital in Chicago. I saw all of these, uh, all these doctors over and over. I've had over 200 injections in the back of my uh, neck to stop the migraines, which didn't stop for four years. But that's only to say, I know nothing about this except a little bit. Our neurons fire in our brain, and there are neuron pathways. And sometimes when events happen, certain neurons fire and go down these pathways, okay? And those are negative for us many times. What God intends to happen is this, those neuron pathways, instead of them firing here, don't take that and move it over here to what is lovely instead of what is anxious feeling, that which is lovely. Until these pathways weaken so much that they actually atrophy. And these new neuron pathways strengthen and go stronger and stronger until the point of your mind does not go here anymore. It goes over here. Okay? They say, is that biblical? Well, I think Paul directs us to that pretty quickly here in these verses of, of Scripture. Uh, and there's two in particular verses of Scripture I'd like to quickly look at here. It says, do not be conformed, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. So don't be transformed by this world, but do what? By the renewing of your mind, be transformed. And then we see in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Key, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Two things, renew your mind. That means get away from your old mind the way you used to think, renew it and make this strong over here. Uh, if I had more time, I'd talk about the repetition. It's like you go to the gym. You say, I'm going to start out with 10 pounds. 10 pounds is pretty comfortable. I'm going to do that. 10 reps today with that. Tomorrow I'm going to do 12 pounds. Do 10 reps with that. I'm going to build up in the next month. I'm going to go 20 pounds. And what's happening is this. We're getting stronger. We're getting stronger. If we do that with our minds by taking them in the directions of that which is true and pure and lovely and honorable, then what happens? These neuron pathways get stronger. And uh, Paul uses the word to practice it. He also, he also uses another, another word, make it a new habit. Our habit is to go over here. The new habit is to transform the th our thinking and to go over here. Uh, so get rid of the old mind and take on the new mind. And the other part that says to take captive every thought. We want to take captive the thoughts because in truth we've become the one who is enslaved are captive to the old thoughts. Do you hear that? We become captive. So if we take those thoughts captive, we are liberated and we can move on to the right thinking. Uh, here's a list of some things uh, to look at. Number one, whatever is true whatever is true true is what is found in god what is found in christ what is found in the work of the holy spirit what is found in god's word that's what is true it's never changing uh brother ryan said that earlier it's never changing it's the same in the uh, 1970s as it is today as it was in the 1840s god's unchanging law it's the same today yesterday and tomorrow god has not changed it to accommodate our culture however I do think many people think that uh, what is noble whatever is noble 
That's a great word. Another word you might place there would be the word honorable, whatever is honorable. It means to revere or to worship. And, and in the New Testament, it really mean, it, uh, it shows the dignified lifestyle of the deacon and the attitude of older men. I love that. That which is noble and honorable, it's, it represents how a deacon should live his lifestyle and how the attitude and actions of older men uh, should be in the life of the local church. Believers should not think on those things which are trivial, which are temporal, which are mundane, which are common, those things uh, that are earthly. Rather, we should think on those things which are heavenly, those things which are more Lofty, those things which are adoration, worthy of praise, worthy of all. Yeah, worthy of all. So, Monday, sitting out in the backyard, maybe many of you were doing the same thing with my glasses on, looking up as the clouds would kind of come and go as the sky would turn blue, and all of a sudden here we could see through those glasses this uh, 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 full eclipse. I didn't know what it was going to be like. I just, I just thought, it's going to be a pretty neat experience. Uh, uh, I'm not going to live long enough to see another one, but I'd like to see this one. Thank you, Lord, for parting the clouds enough to, to allow me to, to watch it. And uh, so Monday, and by the way, uh, my beloved father-in-law passed away a few weeks ago. He would have been 100 on Monday. And... Uh, you, you can't help but think of that. So you're looking at this spectacle in the sky, and you're seeing the moon go in front of the sun, and you see those little flares come out of the sun, and then you see this diamond ring effect and this pop, and it's just, it's awesome. It is awesome. And then I went in and I listened to a commentator. They asked this lady, well, what did you think of the solar eclipse? You know, kind of, na 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 She said, well... She said, I tell you, this is what I thought. Here is a creator God who made this, and I just got to see it. Whoa. I like those commentators. That, that's, you know, whether I like it or not, I, I, that, that was powerful. And, to, and so that became a spiritual experience to me. It wasn't just physical, emotional. It was a spiritual experience. The creator God did that. Uh, so we are to live in a form of that which is worthy of all okay so that uh whatever is right what's true what's noble what is right it's an adjective and it's best translated righteous that which is righteous it describes that which is in perfect harmony with god's unchanging law it uh believers should think on the things related to what is related to god's law which does not ever change whatever is pure uh, it's, uh, whatever is pure, defined as holy, morally clean, undefiled. In the New Testament, it is this. It's to be free from sin. That which is pure means it's free from sin. The clutter, the darkness, the life change, the hurt of sin, to be pure. Then whatever is lovely. I kind of, I don't know why through the years, this is the one I go to first. Uh, when I'm thinking and I've got all this stuff and I'm reminded of scripture and uh, so I start thinking of that is which is lovely. And this is what it means, uh, that which is lovely. And it, by the way, it appears only here in the New Testament, no other place. And the word uh, is best translated sweet, gracious, generous, patient. Well, my grandmother comes to mind. Sweet, gracious, generous, patient. Believers must focus their mind on what the Bible says is pleasing, attractive, and amiable to God. Uh, finally, pure, lovely, and then admirable. And you know, lovely is in contrast to this. It's in, to be lovely is in contrast with that which is bitter, controlling, stingy, impatient. Which world do you want to live in? That which is gracious and lovely or that which is not? You know, uh, if we're thinking about lofty themes, as I said earlier, our conversation is going to follow. And I like to be around those folks. Uh, 
have her thinking comes out in our conversation. And our conversation will always follow what we're thinking. Even if we're a quiet person. Uh, so Paul exhorts us here at the conclusion of verse number eight. He says, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, then dwell on these things. Make this your home. Live here. Make these thoughts a pattern of life. If you don't hear anything else, hear this. The key to godly living is godly thinking. Okay, let me say that again. The key to godly living is godly thinking. That's, that's pretty simple form, but that's, that's what Scripture teaches us. And, we, and what Solomon wisely said, that's, that shows who we are. So, let me move on here as we're... I only have like 20 more minutes, so... No, I don't. I'm... I'm, I'm not telling the truth. Uh, so, you know, there are things worthy to be upset about. There are things that uh, uh, to be even uh, be angry. Bible says, "Be angry and sin not." Uh, uh, yester yesterday uh, was the 79th anniversary of when Debbie's dad helped liberate Nordhausen at the end of World War II, and I remember him telling me the stories of those uh, Jewish. Uh, captors who were there in their black and white and the just skin draped over bone large eyes holding in a squatting position onto the fence and when the american soldiers came and opened the gates some of them had just been sitting and waiting there to die and many never made it out of the gate uh you know i think that still makes me angry uh it makes me very angry to think that there's not there's a whole culture of folks that want to kill millions and millions of people just because they don't like who they are so there are things worthy but i don't let my mind live there i'm not going to be angry about that in such a way that it's going to going to consume me there are small things which consume us that are not on that level so solomon wisely said this watch over your hearts with all diligence for from it flow the springs of life uh, new king james uses it just a little better it says watch over your hearts with all diligence for from it flow springs of the issues of life the word peace we have seen over and over Philippians 4 6 and 7 which precedes what we've been reading there it says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving make your request known to God don't be anxious about it make it known to God don't just sit there and think about it and wish God to do something about it ask him talk to him about it take it to God and it says if you do that this is what happens then the peace of God which transcends all your understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus they will place protection over your hearts and minds by guarding that I was thinking last night about I hate to say it but probably about 2 33 o'clock I was laying there and I was thinking of my friends who were missionaries to Africa and they lived in a compound uh, over there and they had a had a little guy that sat on the corner of their compound and he had a four foot blow gun and he sat there all night long as their guard for protection well uh, God is saying this, this to us he said if then I'm going to guard your hearts and your minds even through your sleep at night even through your daily activities and when tough things come and they will then who are you going to be able to trust you, you can trust me uh, Paul goes on and tells us that we're able to practice by repetition a continuous action and that's what this means just a continuous action continuous it comes it comes in fact you may take this captive over here for a moment and this thought comes in you take it captive you move away from it you know here it is again in an hour 
take it captive. It's a repetitious action over and over until it no longer comes from that direction. Uh, if we practice these things, dwell on these things, what is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, then the peace will guard your hearts and minds. And it means to keep watch over your hearts, guiding us, guarding us from anxiety, doubt, fear, distress, all those th things which trap us. And then conclu in conclusion, uh, don't you like it when a pastor says that? Because yeah, you know he's not telling you the truth. He's probably got about another 15 minutes. So I've got, I've got just a couple of minutes here. Paul states this to the Philippian Christians. He says, number one, he said, you learned it from me. Then he says, you received it from me. He says, you heard it from me. You saw it in me. Uh, Philippians 3.17 tells us that. Imitate what I've, what I've been doing. You, you've seen it in me, now imitate that. And so he says, you saw it in me, now do it. Put it into practice. And so, and so I would say at the conclusion of my message, we've talked about all this stuff, now do it. When I go home today, what am I going to do? I'm going to probably run into something that's just not necessarily comfortable. What am I going to do? I'm going to remember this, and I have the choice to do it or not to do it. So I'm telling you, do it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you love us, and you've shown us that love through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that you've given us the Holy Spirit, that he might prompt us in the life and the way that we should live. We're thankful for your word as it gives us instruction of how to live that life. So, Father, uh, for those of us who are Christ followers, who are believers, who are your children, use this, plant it deep in our hearts, that we might function in such a way that it would bring you honor and bring you glory, as we ask this now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, can we thank Reverend Johnny Sorrell for what a practical and excellent word he shared with us today. Well, we invite you to stand with us as we do close this service together. May we meditate on the name of Jesus. Is there any higher name that which can be named than his, amen? He is worthy. So let's focus on him now as he guides us out of this place. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence So I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire.
So shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy and Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus oh, 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 oh. shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence so I speak Jesus would you meditate on the name of Jesus as we've been singing it and speaking it in this service today And Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my God bless you, church, and may you give every thought captive to Jesus this week. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you for joining us.